Hello and welcome to this first video in Blender. Throughout this video we're going to be covering basic viewport navigation, how to manipulate our objects using position, rotation and scale, as well as going over the basics of edit and object modes. Alright, let's begin. So before we start making stuff I just want to go over a couple of things that I change in Blender um, before I start modeling. Um, so the first thing is the Blender default controls. I'm not a huge fan of, mostly because I'm constantly jumping into other 3D softwares, um, whether it's for baking, texturing, Unreal Engine, etc. So I changed the hotkeys to be industry compatible, which means that the camera controls are going to be the same no matter what software I'm in. I haven't got to try and relearn the keys each time, as well as using W, E, and R for position, rotation, scale. Um, so in terms of kind of speeding up your workflow, by using industry compatible, you could be a lot quicker because you don't have that little brain fart where you're trying to think Blender hotkeys, industry hotkeys, etc. Um, so kind of just bridging the gap between Blender and other softwares. Um, so when you first open Blender, you'll be greeted with this beautiful screen. Everyone has the same screen, unless you're on a newer version of me. I'm pretty sure 3.6 is out now. Um, so to start with, I'm just going to click in the viewport to get rid of that little menu. I want to go to edit, preferences, key map, and up here, mine was already changed, uh, it will say Blender. And if you click that and change it to industry compatible, you can now follow along. Um, if you've already been using Blender, it's fine because the, the videos are not specifically about Blender hotkeys or industry hotkeys, it's just what I'm comfortable with using. It's more about kind of generating art for games. Um, so you will still learn stuff. There will be a few golden little nuggets of information that you can still take forward, etc. Okay. So to start with, I'm just going to go over the different windows that we have available within Blender. Um, so this big viewport here, this is the 3D workspace. Um, so all of my making is going to be done in this area here. On the right hand side, we've got our outliner. So the top right. So currently you're now seeing I've got a camera, I've got a cube, and I've got a light, which is what you will start with by default. And in the bottom right, I've got all the different properties that I can change. Um, so whether I'm going to do like force fields, rigid bodies, etc. Um, they're all available within these sections here. But I won't go over all of them, because it's pretty boring to just talk about this is EV, this is cycles. Um, it will probably be done more on a uh, video by video basis, as opposed to here is everything in one. Pretty self-explanatory. Right. So, first of all, I'm going to show you how to navigate around the scene. So, if you hold Alt on your keyboard, left click and drag, you'll be able to rotate your camera around. And if you hold Alt on your keyboard and click on the middle mouse, you'll be able to pan your camera about. And Alt, right click and drag will zoom you in and out. Or you can just scroll in and out with a scroller. So alternatively, if you're on a laptop, um, and you don't have a mouse for some bizarre reason, uh, on the top right hand side, we've got a view cube, so I can click and drag on that and it will rotate my camera. I can click and drag on the magnifying glass and it will zoom in and out. And I can use the hand to pan around my screen. Um, most of I just use alt. I don't really use these if I want to snap to a specific axis. but. It might seem very uh, alien to you now, but you'll quickly pick up how to kind of navigate around 3D scenes. So just to recap, Alt, left click and drag to rotate, Alt, middle mouse and drag to pan your camera, and Alt, right click and drag to zoom in and out. Or just use scroll wheel. Please excuse my voice, I have a terrible cold. Um, if you keep seeing my mouse go off the top of the screen, it's because I'm pausing so I can cough in peace. Um, so a couple of things, um, right now the cube in the very middle of our scene is our point of focus. So when I rotate my camera, that's the bit that it's going to rotate around. If I click on my light and I rotate, you can see that it's still focusing on the cube. A little hot key for you. If you press F on your keyboard with a different object selected, it will snap your camera. Um, so now that is the new point of focus. So I click on the camera, I press F, snap it to it. Click on the cube, press F, it'll snap to it. Um, later on when we start doing some actual modeling, you can click on individual vertices and use the same trick. Um, so say I'm trying to put loads of little bits of detail here. 
I can just click press F and it will snap my camera to that selection to allow me to edit some more more precise it's probably a, a better way to word it right so we have a beautiful cube in the middle of our scene um, it's not really doing much so in Blender we've got object mode and then we've got something called edit mode so object mode is where we can do basic transformations like position, rotation, and scale. Um, and edit mode is where we can kind of dive into the individual vertices, edges, faces. I'll go over them if you are brand new to 3D um, in a sec. So if I press W on my keyboard, I'll get this little gizmo come up. Um, so I can click on the arrows and it'll move my cube around the screen, like so. Oops, not like that. If I press E, it will give me a rotation gizmo. And I can click on these circles and it will rotate in that axis. So if I press R on my keyboard, it will give me this um, scale gizmo. So I can click on the blue one, I can pull it up, click on the green one, make it wider. And on the red one, maybe I want to make it really thin, like so. Um, there you go, you've got a beautiful picture frame. So easy. Right, so I'm just going to press Control Z to undo all the, everything I just done. So I've got my basic cube again. Um, just like everything, like the camera controls, um, in the top right I can use these to rotate. On my left hand side I've got some arrows for the move gizmo, I've got this circle for rotate, and I've got the scale, uh, which is like a swear and a swear and an arrow. Um, you might get confused if you press R twice, it'll give you this gizmo instead. Um, it's still scale, I never really use this one to be honest. Um, just like an extra added step that I don't need in my life. So if that does come up, just press R again and it will toggle you back to the usual one that I normally use. So like I was saying earlier, um, we've got object mode and we've got edit mode. In the top left, where it says object mode, making sure that your cube is selected, you can press edit mode. Uh, or the hotkey for this is 1, 2 or 3 on your keyboard if you're in object mode, and then 4 to go back to object mode. So once I'm in edit mode, you can see I've got all these different tools um, that I can use to kind of push and pull this geometry about, depending on what I actually want to do. Um, we're we're going to make something after I've gone over the basics of Blender, so to speak. So every 3D model, there's three ways that we, four ways technically, uh, that we can edit them. So we have vertices, edges, and faces. Within every face, there are two triers. Um, so it's like an invisible, I don't know if I just add a thing so you can see it. Boom. So this doesn't actually exist. Um, but what happens is when you export your mesh into a game engine, it will triangulate it. Um, so though here it is a face, in reality it is two triangles. Um, just something to remember because later down the line when we start going over topology and all the other fun stuff, um, it'll be really important that you're not kind of cutting through triers and giving you weird glitching errors from certain specific perspectives. Um, where are that? Right, so, like I was saying, we've got vertices, edges, faces. So at the very top, we've got these three different selection icons. Um, so the first one is vertex, which are the corner points. And using the same gizmos, the W, E, and R, so W for position, I can move these independently. So like I was saying, two triangles, but one face. So there's actually like a invisible line that connects them like so uh, or it could be this way who knows give you a different effect wowza so that's vertices edges are the what connects the two vertices together I assume that most of you have done maths at some point in your lifetime and then three on my keyboard is going to give me face so the very last icon or polygon um, I don't just say face but it is a polygon where I can click on the individual faces, and again, I can use W, E, and R to do some funky stuff to get some strange shapes. And on the left hand side in edit mode, um, we've got things like extrude, insert, bevel, etc., loop cut. Um, I'm not going to go over what all of these do because it's just wasting time. So each video I'll, each video I do, I will try and make it so we're targeting specific tools on the left hand side. Um, just so you kind of get a wide variety of different things that we could do. 
So just to recap, throughout this video we've looked at viewport navigation, we've looked at how you can effectively scale, rotate and change the position of your objects, as well as given a brief overview of object and edit mode. In the next video we're going to start modeling a bullet and going more in depth with the different tools available to us within the edit mode.